Okay, restrict. Okay, restricted answer from the 2015 paper. This is question six. Uncooked egg white is mainly composed of dissolved proteins. During cooking processes, the proteins become denatured as the protein chains unwind and the egg white solidifies. Explain why the protein chains unwind. So if the chains are unwinding but they're not breaking apart, what we're really looking here is about hydrogen bonds breaking. That is what stabilises secondary structure in proteins and they're the easiest ones to break. Uh, B. Temperature at which the protein becomes denatured is called the melting temperature, at which the protein, um, sorry, we did that twice. The melting temperature of a protein can be determined using fluorescence. In this technique, the protein is mixed with a dye that gives out visible light when it attaches to hydrophobic parts of the protein molecule. The hydrophobic parts of the structure are on the inside of the protein and the dye has no access to them unless the protein unwinds. So the idea is that we would have a kind of structure of a protein. Let's do wiggly bits here okay so the bits that are in the inside of the protein in this section in here right in the core they're all going to be hydrophobic and the bits that are around the outside edge of it they're going to be hydrophilic because they're going to be happy being kind of close to normal biological things which are mainly water okay however if we break all the things that are holding this together then it'll unwind and the bits in the middle the hydrophobic bits will become accessible by the dye. Okay. Circle the part of the structure to which the hydrophobic dye is most likely to attach. So if it's hydrophobic, we need it to attach to other hydrophobic things. So get rid of anything with a charge on it, like a dipole. So this is not going to be good. This is not going to be good. This is not going to be good. None of these bits are going to be any good, which le really leaves me the two that, they're, that, I, that are acceptable. I think this one is, is the best one because we have a ring structure and they're pretty stable and generally very hydrophobic. But this one as well, this is pretty hydrophobic as well. It's not very polar in terms of its bonds and then they are, they're just a chain, an alkyl chain. They generally are hydrophobic. Another protein in egg white is conalbumin. The temperature of a conalbumin dye mixture is gradually increased. The fluorescence is measured and a graph is produced. The melting temperature is the temperature at which the fluorescence is halfway between the highest and lowest fluorescence values. Determine the melting temperature in degrees C for this protein. Okay, right, so halfway between this point and that point, okay, the high and the low. So reading this across, trying to do this pretty carefully, okay, so my high, I am reading at 2600. My low is harder because it's actually in between a box. So I'm going to take that as midway up this one. So that's going to be 850. Okay, I'm looking for the midpoint between these. So what I'm seeing is that I have a difference of 1750. Divide that by 2 is 875. And then add that on to my 850 to get me back halfway up again, so I'm at 1725, okay. Right, so then I've got to find my 1725, so here we go, one, seven, and then a quarter of that one. I think this is gonna be difficult to, well, this is, it was difficult to read. Okay, I get it here, and read it down. So 50.5 which they're gonna, which is actually spot on what the Mart scheme said. They gave you plus or minus uh, one from that. Not a huge amount to give um, when you're having to read part on scales, but okay. Question C, once cooked and eaten, the digestive system breaks the protein chains into amino acids with the help of enzymes. State the name of the digestion process where enzymes break down proteins into amino acids. So this is the opposite of a condensation reaction, so that is hydrolysis. Little picture of this one, state how many amino acids molecules for, join to form this section of protein. So find your links. There is a peptide bond there is a peptide bond, there is a peptide bond, there is a peptide bond. And there's one on the other side, I suppose, going off to make one. So what have we got? We've got one, two, three, 
four, five. Draw the structure of one amino acid that would be produced when this section of the protein chain is broken down. Right, so to do that, you just have to re-establish any one of the amino acids that you've got. So in this one here, you would need to put this back together with an OH and you'd have to change that nitrogen to NH2. Uh, you'd have to stick an OH back in here, uh, put that back to an NH2 and so on and so on. And any of the ones that you draw, as long as you've re-established a C double bond O, bond OH at one end and an NH2 at the other with everything that was in the middle in the middle, then you're good.